So here we have the Heath Zenith HZ232 in black. And this is a motion detection uh, system. And I'm using it to replace my existing motion detection lights, which are right there. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because those are brass. They still work perfectly. I will be donating them to Habitat for Humanity. But I want to freshen up the house a bit. And I've got three of these lights. I have another one way down there that I will be changing out as well. And let's take a look at this and see how effective it is and how it works. By the way, I bought these for about $45 Canadian on Amazon and they drop 30% uh, over the course of the week. And so I'm return I just returned the ones that Amazon shipped me last week and I'm installing these ones, which are identical uh, so these cost me about $30 Canadian, which is a smoking deal. Let's take a quick look at the box, see if there's anything interesting on it. By the way, I don't think there is. Well, let's just take a look. There you go. Not a very difficult install. But we'll show you how to do that. So let's unbox this. And I have not opened one of these before, so I don't know what's in here, but I can imagine. Look, instructions, how exciting. Um, if you really don't know what you're doing, you should take a quick look at them. But for most people, uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Attach the black to the black, the white to the white, make sure the ground is on, screw it back in. Then go back inside, turn your light switch on. That's about it. And you can see what's in there. Just single light unit. Wow, literally nothing. Okay, I thought it was going to be in two pieces. When I did my last ones, these brass ones, the motion detection was on a separate piece and I had to attach it, but this one is not the case. So in here they're giving me some wire nuts as well. Uh, and presumably there's a mounting plate in here. Nope, they have, ah, there's the mounting plate. Okay, so what we've got to do is just back these two screws off, which I will do right now. Okay, so this is just tighter than I thought, but it, it is coming out. So now I'm using the slotted because that's what a lot of people have. In general, I would use the Phillips much better, but I'm using the slotted just to prove you can do it. Uh, generally a terrible idea. Uh, slotted, uh, you're gonna end up cutting your fingers and just, just an awful tool. So yeah, don't do this unless you really have to. In fact, I'm going to go get a Phillips. All right, so there. Phillips, much happier, won't slide off. You'll also note that I'm working on this on the plastic. Oops, try not to drop it because you look like a fool on camera uh, because I don't want to scratch the finish. So put the cardboard down or the plastic or something to stop the finish from getting scratched. There we go, that's off. Now, you just pull the wires out. You've got your normal wires here. You've got your load, your black, your positive. Don't lick that, bad idea. You've got your white which is your return and you've got your ground which is also a tether wire and you wonder what is this thing i don't know what this extra wire is okay well if you read the instructions it says this wire is not for normal connection don't in other words most people aren't going to use it the red wire allows you to connect them uh, so that your lights are synchronized i don't want synchronized that's the whole point of having motion detection i want each light to have its own motion detection so for me and apparently as it says in this little tag for most people this little wire is just going to sit back in its little home there and get nice and comfy and stay there for the rest of its life and then get thrown out so i'm just going to ignore that so let's just get this tether undone and the wires you should always twist them a bit so that they don't fray on you and then we just Hang this one back up off of the ground and the tether. My current uh, lights are on a motion detection system, so I always have to leave this light switch on, which means if I were to start screwing with that, I'd get 120 volt jolt, which isn't enough to kill you. Well, it's unlikely to kill you, but it isn't gonna make you feel good for sure. It's not very nice, it's a very staticky bite. So turn it off. Proper thing to do is go in the basement, flip your breaker, but um, it's really not necessary because that effectively is a breaker. So right now the electricity is off, I'm good to go back outside and change that light. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, take the lights out. So you just, in my case, I'm just going to unscrew this and I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit and watch. 
And now we just unscrew these. In my case, these are thumbed on. You might have something that's a little more challenging. Just back this off and you'll see there's the round, positive and negative. Okay, so we just take these marrets off, some kind, sometimes called a wire nut. There we go. And I do, in my case, need to get a screwdriver to take the uh, ground off. Uh, the ground also acts as a tether. Okay, so make sure you hold this while you're undoing that tether and that ground because otherwise it'll drop. And then instead of taking it to our friends at Habitat for Humanity, where it can be reused, you'll be taking it to the dump. Okay, so as I said, I've got this plate, right, that came with, but I've already got the identical plate there and it's in the same position. So this for me is just garbage. If you don't have one of these plates, they're easy enough to install. So you simply uh, bolt it in here and here into the box. Very straightforward, so that screw and that screw. Uh, get this to be level because you want your light to be level. And then you just grab your light and you put those two bolts through those two holes. Rocket science. Okay, but before you do that, connect your ground, which is your tether, right? So now, whenever you're working with wiring, you should know that you always put your ground, you always wrap the ground around, not your ground, you wrap any wire around, and you do it so that uh, it is going around in the way that the uh, threads are going, which is always clockwise. So you make sure it goes around clockwise. And the reason for that is because when you screw it down, you don't want that to become loose. You need to make sure that this is all connected and happy. There we go. There, so that's nice and happy. That's tethered, that's tethered, that's great. Okay, so for those of uh, you that are mental geniuses, uh, <laughs> uh, all you do is put black to black and white to white. Now what you do is you take your wires and you tie them together. You twist them, again, clockwise. Do not do it counterclockwise because you want them to be tight. Then you put your wire nut, better known as a marrette, on it, and you crank it down until it's tight. And what you do is you tug on the wires to see if they come out. And if they come out, you've done it wrong, and just do it again. Not a problem, you can do it 10 times. If the wires break off, just strip some more and start again. So we'll do this with this white as well. All right, with the, ah, there we go. And then Marat, you, you can't see in there, but basically a Marat's just a nut. So it's sometimes called, a, often called a wire nut. Although, again, it's the idea is to make sure that these wires don't ever come loose and uh, that the circuit always stays going through this and not grounding out or touching anything else. Then just tuck the wires underneath. Right, get them in there. Make sure that you're not pinching the wires, so these have to go in as well, right? They need to go in the box, if at all possible. And then you just put this pin through that hole and vice versa. Well, vice versa being the other side. So let's just do that. Boom. Boom. Now, these nuts, these are very, very tight, as in you will not have a lot of threads to put these little nuts on. So, you want to make sure that it's pressed into here tight as well. Uh, not just because you want to hold the light on, because you also don't want the water going down in there. And eventually, even if it's in a place like I have it here, where it's covered, you'll get water in it because somebody will use a hose, or somebody will throw something, or whatever. So, you need to make sure that you've got this tight into here. Okay, so we'll just crank that in and then we'll straighten this up a bit. Okay, so I've taken this off because after playing around with this, I, this one's just a little too short and it's driving me crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back this off and put some washers behind it. So a few uh, seconds ago, I went and got some washers, which I just happen to have around the house. And so let's do that. So I'm just gonna back off this mounting bracket. So if you're trying to put these screws on and you notice that as you add the washers, they keep falling off. The pro tip on this is just to use tape. That's what the installers did to build the house, um, put them on before. And that's what I'm going to do as well. I've seen it done lots of times. 
Uh, so you just put some tape on it to hold those washers in place and then you push the mounting bracket back into place and what will happen is as you tighten this up the screw will go right through the tape but it will hold the washers on. Okay then take your bulb now this says maximum 60 watts so don't go using a 100 watt bulb not that anybody has those anymore because everybody's using LEDs like this one. Uh, this is a 9 watt bulb which is about the same as a 60 watt conventional bulb, incandescent as we used to call them, and just spin that in. Now, a couple of things to know. First, you're not quite done, although you're almost done. First thing you need to do is take that sensor and turn it to the direction you want it to go. Now my driveway is that way, and I would like it to turn on when people approach, so I'm going to literally just crank it. And yes, you can crank it, you will not hurt it. There you go, it's moved a little bit. I'm gonna tighten that up, that's a little loose. It just doesn't make any difference, but I don't want it loose. There we go. And now that's focusing down my driveway. That's the edges. So it's going that way, which is just what I want. The right side of the light is a sensitivity for the motion detector. And right now it is set to high. I'm going to set it to medium. Now you'll have to play with it to see how that works for your situation. So the last thing you want to set is your test. 5, 10, or 15 seconds. It basically is this little switch here. When it's on test, and if I turn the light on, this will turn on. When I put it on 5 seconds, what will happen is when the motion detector detects something, this will stay on for 5 seconds and 10 and 15, as you might imagine. So I like mine to stay on for 10, so I'm going to move it to the second to the end. There we go. Before we actually wrap up, I'm going to throw it on test and I'm going to go turn the light on and see if we have any sparks. Yay! Okay, so now I'm going to go set it on the 10 second setting. And then tonight I'm gonna come back and I'll show you how that works. It's getting dark. Let's see how the motion detection works. When I go outside here. Bingo. Bingo. And in case you're wondering what 9 watts times 3 looks like, quite a lot of light. Now I'll show you a trick. Alright, so that is the switch for my outside lights. So let's line that up so you can see. Now if I flip that off, they go off. Flip it back on, they go on. Right? And that's because they're still on that 5 minute timer or 10 minute timer that I had set them to. Watch this, if I do it fast, oops. There, finally, it did take a second. I had to do it a few times, but you can see that switch is on and those lights are off. So basically, if you toggle it very quickly, off and on, those lights will turn back off until I go outside again. So let's just do that to prove the point. Bingo. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you'd click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below. We'll get back to you. You can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.urtech.ca. Thanks. Bye-bye.